slapstick looking production <laughs> and it sort of appears to be all about you taking this story forward. Yeah, it's a one-woman show, so uh, it's quite intense. <laughs> but it's uh, based on Nina Simone's life, or it is Nina Simone's life. And I just changed the name and um, various things so I could have more freedom as a writer. Uh, but it follows her life as a child prodigy up until the civil rights movement. And I, I know how difficult it is to do a one-person production. I've, yeah. I've talked to many people about it before. How difficult was it to get into that mindset of playing all the different facets of her life <sighs> on stage just as you? Um, I mean, it's it's a very intense process because Nina Simone was quite a, a character. And so, um, but at the beginning when I started writing, I wanted to focus on who she was as a woman and, and kind of tell that story of that side of her as an artist. I'm curious because you're, you're more than just the actress in this. It, it's like you're do, kind of directing it, you seem to be producing it, you seem to be funding it or at least trying to get yeah. the funding in place for it. What kind of pressures is that putting on you? And, and, and does that make a difference to the way you actually play the, the show? Uh, well, I had a director, uh, Aaron, Aaron Hawkins. He directed it in, in Shanghai. And, um, and I, it's the same show, so that's a burden off. <laughs> but as far as like your producing and, and everything like that, um, once you have a formula for producing, it's, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's quite easy, but you already know how to plan ahead of time so you're not so stressed out. Um, when it's time to perform. And Shanghai's been quite a big part of your life, hasn't it? Yeah, six years. <laughs> six years of my life. So you moved from the US to teach in Shanghai, didn't you? Yes. And how did you come up with the theatre production company then? Uh, after about a year or so, or a year or two in Shanghai, I started missing performing. And so I decided, well, you know, I saw a lot of people, a lot of uh, theatre companies, they're kind of popping up and doing their own productions and, and I wanted to, I always wanted to write this piece about her, so I decided to just start working on it. Um, and I had done research that the best way to get your work produced is to produce it yourself and so in Shanghai I had a, um, a network of friends and a network to kind of tap into and so I, I utilised that. And then the sort of Kickstarter got involved, how have you been using this crowdfunding yeah. idea to, to it can't be easy doing anything creative using yeah. something like crowdfunding because you can't guarantee that people are going to get money out of it. Yeah, well, I mean, the crowdfunding actually it didn't work that well for me, but I had a really strong network, like I said, in Shanghai, so I did uh, two nights of a concert there, and the first night I had, like, maybe 200 and something, and the second night, like, almost 500 people, wow. like, showing up. <laughs> so it was easy to raise the money. Then from that, I had, like, some other sponsors that helped me. Um, so... So that was that was really beneficial for me, actually, to be in Shanghai and have that network because it really helped me push the show forward. Culturally, did you notice differences between the US and Shanghai? Then how did it differ? And of course, the um, UK as well, because there's lots of stuff <laughs> in the UK too. Yeah. Um, well, I guess like people like identify with various things in the show because it touches on like lost love, relationship between the father, like. Um, racism and and all of these different topics so people kind of identify with different things and and I find that to be really interesting because when I was writing it you know I was kind of focusing on her life and wanting to tell this story so it's kind of interesting to see how people respond to it um, in various parts of the world. And to what extent do you kind of identify with either the character you're playing or Nina mm -hmm. Simone herself? Um, I mean, the character is essentially... <laughs> Am I a legend? <laughs> yeah, oh, yet. well, not yet. Hopefully one day. Yeah, hopefully you will be. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, I identify with, with Nina Simone's, like, struggle um, as far as, like, kind of finding yourself because um, she didn't want to be a singer. She always wanted to be a concert pianist. And it was kind of the same for me where I always wanted to be an actress. And then I realized after university that if you don't sing, you hardly work. So, um, <laughs> so I started finding my own voice as well. And, um, and I found like kind of like where I, I sat and where I felt comfortable as a singer through Discovery Nina Simone. And so when you played the, the character in this production, did you notice the changes of how the character evolved and mm. how they relate to real life as well then? Um, some, uh, I guess, I guess I saw it before I started playing the character, I guess. Mm. Um, uh, because I had read Nina Simone's biography quite a few times and it wasn't until I had been in Shanghai and had my own kind of life experiences because it was one of the reasons why I moved because I wanted more life experience that I felt ready to um, play this character and I identified with some of the struggles that she had.